Hello YouTube, Joe Hobrick, the Cloud Tech Guy. I wanted to just do a quick shout out and talk about the Professional Cloud Architect exam from Google Cloud Platform. The reason I'm doing this is this. The exam has been updated is my understanding. And it's important that you study even harder and understand the case studies to address the questions on the exam. Now, it was a fair assumption when I took the exam that there is about 20% or so of case study questions and the rest was mainly, uh, you know, questions and answers, very simple. My understanding now from many students that this has been updated, the exam is much harder, and there's been some chatter about it as well. So I wanted to reach out and go through the case studies with folks and give you a, an example, walk through one question and help you gauge where you are before you take this exam. With 50% of the questions being essentially case study, there's really no way you're going to pass it if you're not able to decipher the case study and answer multiple choice answers, essentially, uh, and questions, uh, multiple choice uh, answers, uh, you know, in, in the question itself, in the case study questions, appropriately. This is important because this is a hard exam. It's not an AWS exam where you memorize speeds and feeds. And, you know, you could pass if you guess uh, some of them as well. This one here will be much harder for you to pass if you really don't know, um, you know, the different services, the capabilities, and also to how to uh, read the case study. So what I'd like to do now is make sure you go over to the Cloud Architect uh, exam page. The link is in the description. And then go register. now. There's a cloud architect exam that you could take, and this is um, this is the exam page. But if you go over here, I believe, yeah, there it is. Go over there and take this little practice exam. Now, this isn't, you know, what I would call probably, you know, the hardest, you know, questions per se, but they're good ones for you to start out on. Go ahead and launch the exam. I've already been through the uh, process numerous times, so I brought it back up. And now I'm on a specific question I want to talk about. This one here we're going to go through. We're going to go through this case study question and make sure that you know how to look at what they are asking and how to answer the question because this is a a situation where on the exam, if you mess up any of these, you're going to be essentially like a panda bear on a bamboo tree in a hurricane. This is not a good thing. Now, let's go ahead and get started. You want to go and look at the case study. I'd recommend that you read the case study and then start the video again, and we'll go through this. But basically, I want to point out this question here is going to ask you to read the case study, of course, and then look at the technical requirements. And it's asking you which of these technical requirements would be addressed with this essentially case study question that is giving you a scenario. In other words, the developers are evaluating GCP. They've identified applications that can easily move to Google App Engine. Okay, stop right there. Applications that will move to App Engine flexible environment. Okay, we should know what App Engine is and we should definitely know the two environments in App Engine as well. We have standard and we have flexible. Be aware, you need to know the difference and you need to also understand what App Engine is, right? It's a, it's essentially what? A managed service. This is an application development platform 
they're going to move their applications to this application development platform that is a managed service that also can also be used essentially for um, managing as well the uh, migration uh, of services as well so be aware but also too you know we need to you know read this a little bit better what i like to do before we answer the question is let's go back to the case study now the case study technical requirements now if you read this you'll see that essentially all these technical requirements are here they want you to choose two out of the five requirements that will be met by using Google App Engine flexible, flexible environment. Tongue twister for me, sorry. Okay, now what we'd like to do now is let's just go back and just double check. Evaluate and choose an automation framework for provisioning resources. This is technical requirements. Right. The question saying the developers will deploy the code using the Google SDK tools. What are the SDK tools? Right. That's going to be your GS util. That's your API bundle. Right. That's going to be, you know, whatever the uh, platform is, such as. Now. One of the areas as well to realize is be aware that this is mentioning the Google Cloud SDK. There's also an App Engine SDK. Let's go take a look at what the Google Cloud SDK tools are. And again, you should know this before you take the, the exam here, right? If we go down here, here's the features. We have G Cloud, right? G Cloud is going to allow you to um, interact with the Google Cloud platform. GS Util, this is going to be used for what? For, for cloud storage. It also supports the uh, PowerShell. It has a big query tool as well, and also a kube tool which is for kubernetes for containers now there's different libraries here as well just be aware and again with the sdk you can essentially use the command line tools for managing pretty much any uh, resource in the google cloud platform so this is a set of tools for the G gcp platform you're going to manage VMs with this, use BigQuery, so on and so on. The developers can use scripts. You could download this for different, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, types of uh, desktops or servers, whatever you're using. Okay, now that we know what the SDK is, we already know what App Engine is, right? But let, let me just take a second and go back. Uh, let's go take a look at App Engine. Now, App Engine is essentially a application development platform. It's a platform as a service. These are features of App Engine. For example, it's fully managed, right? It supports application security, has an ecosystem traffic splitting open and flexible supports uh, different resources there's a pricing guide as well but you do want to know the difference between the different uh, deployments uh, basically which is standard and flexible and then if you go over here to pricing this sort of goes through that scenario. Now for this question here, you want to know, uh, basically just understand the difference between standard and flexible. And again, I'll let you figure out what you know, and what you don't. Now let's go ahead and start answering this question. Dress for when. 
again, they're moving applications in house uh, from in house to the Google Cloud Platform. They're going to use App Engine, App Engine flexible environment. We know that if we go back here, does this allow you to encrypt data? Absolutely. Now, what I'm going to do is just validate that the requirements of the stated technical requirements are, are going to match up between the two pages. And then what we'll do is unselect the ones that don't, and then we should have our correct answers. Manage services whenever possible. Okay, identify production services. Lo and behold, what a surprise. And again, support failover. Lo and behold, there we go again. And you see what I'm doing, right? This is a good practice for anyone that hasn't looked at the case studies, right? And again, these are all correct uh, as far as technical requirements that the CTO would like you to address and the CEO, right? Now, we know that we have to select two out of five. And we want to correlate essentially what App Engine is going to do for us. What is App Engine? Well, we know it's a managed service, right? So that's probably going to be one of the answers. But let's, let's hold off and look at all of these and think about it. Can App Engine, can you essentially encrypt data on the wire and at rest? Then the next area to look at is identify production services that can migrate to the cloud to save capacity. Well, I don't think that's probably going to be a good answer. Because of the fact, you know, again, we're looking at App Engine and we're not really uh, talking about, uh, you know, in the solution itself, basically uh, specific uh, ways to uh, stretch that capacity, reduce it, right? Support failover the production environment to the cloud during an emergency. Well, again, you know, App Engine could, you know, again, help with facilitating some of that. But again, this is not really going to meet that based on what is being asked here. Evaluate and choose an automation framework for provisioning resources in the cloud. That is essentially one of the areas that App Engine would likely fit because we know it's a managed service and we also know that using the SDK, for example, uh, we could also provision resources as well. Now, now with this requirement, this is more around you using the SDK to interact with the APIs. You could develop scripts. This is, again, automation is what they're really asking. So I think that could be a good one. And then if we support multiple VPNs, now nothing in here is inferring that as well. So again, if we uncheck these, then I think, you know, those are the best answers. App Engine is a managed service. So that one there is fairly simple, I think. There's no real explanation needed. And you could certainly automate because they, they talked about the SDK, right? Remember, we have G Cloud and we have GS Util for the storage. And then there's also PowerShell, so on and so on built in. Again, a lot of flexibility here. This is how you need to address the case study questions. Read them. At first, these all sound good when we go back to the case study. 
But remember, they're just talking about App Engine. We have to know what that service is and how that service is going to um, address the technical requirements. On the other hand, if they were talking about business requirements, we would do the same thing. And, you know, again, address the answers and try to rule out the answers the best you can. Now, of course, you're not going to have uh, the browser or a book or anything available to you when you're taking this exam. So just be aware of that. You'll need to know pretty much what App Engine is, what the SDK could be used for. You'll be okay. And then what you want to do is scroll through the uh, practice exam and keep on doing them. Now, this is another example of a question that you would see. This is where they ask you to look at the diagram and basically answer the question in the dress for a win. And if we go back here, you want to do the same thing. Basically, they're asking you uh, to look at the event-based processing. Okay, well, we already know what is going to address a pipeline in GCP, hopefully, right? We want to address, you know, first of all, the order. So don't jump to conclusion yet. Um, just be aware that uh, when, when they said a pipeline, right? That automatically kicked in and said pub sub to me. Now, just be aware, don't jump the gun because you could easily do this. This is asking you to put the services in order. Number one, what would you use? Data is coming in to the GCP platform. And then it has to be processed, right? So the first thing that would likely take the um, data would probably be cloud storage, right? That's ingestion. That's generally what we'd use for ingestion. Number two would have to process the incoming data, right? So we know that it would probably be cloud storage. Right. But then looking at this deeper, could it be something else? And this is where it could get really, really tricky. Now, number two, if we look at PubSub, what is PubSub? Well, PubSub, as you may be aware, is going to be used for push and pull. This is going to be an event service, essentially. It's going to kick off a trigger. Now, what could happen as well, and again, this is where at first you could jump to conclusion thinking uh, that uh, there could be something to process the data coming in. You could certainly use a VM here like App Engine. And this is where, again, uh, things could get a little tricky. Now, does it make sense in this situation looking at this? No, not at all. Number two would likely be what? PubSub, right? So we know that it would be probably C or D. Now, data flow or data cloud functions, that is. And it's saying to compress user uploaded images, what will be the, the third uh, solution that you'd want to use. Now, what is cloud data flow? Now, cloud data flow is essentially what? That's going to take the uh, message that's being triggered, the event that has occurred. It's going to be sent over to three here. And basically, um, that is going to process uh, that file and then send it over, right? Likely the best answer would likely be data flow. Now, what is cloud function? 
Now, cloud function, right? This is your serverless microservices capability. That wouldn't really be a good use case just because of the, the type of workload. Data flow would be better suited in this specific case because it's going to process those files and then go send them over to be stored uh, in storage or SQL for that matter. And again, this is a tricky one, not knowing the main difference. You could still get this down if you could figure out one and two, but number three is still, you really need to know all the services inside and out. This is where people go wrong on the test. The best answer would likely be C, based on the uh, scenario um, that you see here. Basically, number one is going to be uh, cloud storage. You got to basically have um, from a mobile device, uh, in this case here, right? This is uploading images to cloud storage. And then number two, cloud pub sub is going to say, whoop, file's been dumped in cloud storage. We're going to send it over to cloud functions here. And what's cloud functions do? This is your serverless sort of, you know, little snippet of code that you're going to run. And it's going to go ahead and send that over to number three through PubSub, right? And we'll um, basically be sending that topic over to number three, right? Which in this case would be data flow. Now, looking at this again, this is a, a pretty challenging one because this is actually, in my opinion, more of a data engineer question than a cloud architect question. You really got to know the data services extremely well to get this one right. With that said, folks, that's all that I had as far as going through some examples. This is what you're going to have to do on the exam. This is not easy. Please do study. Please don't expect that there's going to be any kind of test dumps. There just isn't going to be. This is not one of those speeds and feeds where you could memorize numbers and you could memorize a service. This is where you got to figure this out and get this right. This is a challenging exam. I wish you all luck. Please reach out to me. Please also do subscribe. I've got a ton of content. Uh, that I'll be putting out here in the next few months. I'm developing many new courses. I'm really excited uh, around what I'll be doing around Google Cloud and running blockchains in the cloud service as well. And also just getting into newer technologies as well, hopefully down the road. With that said, please like and subscribe and see you all later. Good luck on the exam.